The following program contains language, images, and or subject matter that may be objectionable to some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. Direct from Albany, New York, it's time for This week's new film and DVD releases. And the chance to win free movie tickets with the poster pair game. And now your hosts, Ed and Dave. Hello! Welcome to the new media zone. Ed and Dave here. Ed and Dave with you. Celebrating three years Ooh. of the new Media Zone. Now, most of those new shows uh, only last, and I think we do have one I'm going to mention on this show, yeah. Uh, we took our inspiration from those 70s shows, which would just slap new on the title and all of a sudden change the cast or something. Or Dick Van Dyke would do a new show and just put new in front of it. So temperatures rising. The new, that's my favorite. The new temperatures rising. We put a new cast and that went through three cast changes, but it was only new right. for the second. This went through <laughs> no cast changes. Uh, no. So, yes, this is the new Media Zone, and, uh, which was basically the same show as the old Media Zone, except we weren't predicting a pandemic, no. which would shut down the movies and things and DVD releases, which was what our show was. So we came up with this creative way to carry on during the pandemic. And, and so, by we, you meant you. Um, did I come up with yeah, I certainly have no ideas. Uh, I just uh, show up. I think uh, we did. Uh, and during the pandemic, don't forget, there's a series of Colony Central reunion shows, which was going to be two episodes. And because we covered... Uh, Sand Creek stretched in the four, mm. but those are fun uh, looks back at the 70s, even if you didn't go to college or school then, high school. Plus, uh, we also should uh, mark the passing of Pier 1 oh, about yes. this time in 2020. Well, it, it, it's all tied together with the three of us. Yes, everything is tied in, and uh, we did get some extra shows, which we desperately needed last year just happened to be our 40th reunion, which as far as I know, was never consummated in an actual reunion. Was it a Zoom reunion? There was no reunion except our four episode run, as oh, far as I know. Right. Of course, I was bumped off of the official page by that uh, Laura Zengelhardt or whatever she was, who was offended that I mentioned that at a reunion, maybe we don't have the music so loud so we can talk to the folks we haven't seen in 10 years. But no, she brought in the refrigerators, the loudest band in the area, at that 30th, and we couldn't hear anybody. But uh, we regress or digress. What do we do? Uh, we, we, we do both. And uh, so we're going to take a look at 1971, a year we actually remember. Well, because we were... Nine at that point. Mm -hmm. I was deep in the throes of uh, drug-induced stupor at the oh, time. Geez. We were still in um, sixth grade here, weren't we? Um. Or in uh, elementary school. I how forget. old were we? Uh, nine. Uh, we were probably in third or fourth grade. Fourth grade. Well, I do know seventh grade was 74 to 75 because John Egloff had the Jaws novel on his desk. Oh. So we would still be in uh, elementary school. Yes. Don't ask me which grade, but like fourth, fourth or fifth. Fourth grade. Fourth grade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's start with the films. The top ten films. Okay. Of 1971. At number ten, Willard. Oh. That's a rat movie, isn't it? Yes. Uh, which one had Davison in it? Was that Willard or was this that one. Ben? I, I was trying to think of his name, but you got it. Bruce okay. Davison. Yep. And Elsa Lancaster was his mother, oh. and um, Ernest Borgnine 
okay. was the boss. Remember, he set yeah. the, the rats on him, and he said, tear him up, Willard, tear him up. And it was Ernest Borgnine. And wasn't Borgnine. there Ben was another rat movie, right? Ben was odd because there was a Michael Jackson song, and it was a young boy who be friend. But there was some rat killings, but it was odd, a little odder. All right. Number nine, The Last Picture Show. Um... I'm probably mistaken, but this this one was in black and white. Yeah. Was it Peter Bogdanovich film? Yeah. Was Sybil Shepherd topless? Yes. Then it's a good movie. You're correct on all, all right. the counts. Of course, right. Leachman got an Oscar, I believe. She was in this, and a bizarre scene, the topless scene, at a pool, an mm -hmm. indoor pool party or something. Yeah, that's what I recall. And there was, um, you know, the '70s on display all over, I believe. Below decks. Oh, <laughs> below decks. Right now, uh, was it akin to Platoon, where it's an eighteen-year-old's first time in the bush? Bush, yes. Okay. I think well, there was a joke on Saturday Night Live where uh, we lost the hustler, uh, Larry Flint, <laughs> oh, okay. and they, in lieu of flowers, they said they could you could bring bushes. Bring the whole bush. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think I've seen that whole movie, but enough of it that I'll, I'll watch the whole thing if I get a chance. All right. Number eight, Carnal Knowledge. Oh. I believe Anne Margaret? Right. I don't know who else was in it. Not, wait, this is an Art Garfunkel. Yes. Okay. And uh, Jack Nicholson. Oh, uh, okay. It has the famous scene where she's in bed. She's in bed all day. Get out of the bed. Go. <laughs> she doesn't want to leave the house. Jack is yelling at her. Remember, this was an early HBO staple when mm. we had HBO and you would sneak in mm. at late at night. And that night. and the Herod experiment. <laughs> right. And Herod Summer. That's which right. Which had a lot of act, a couple of actresses from Eight is Enough in there. Oh, yes, yes. Wasn't Tippi Hedren in one of them? She was in the first one, I think. I think that's on DVD, but not hasn't made Blu-ray yet. It should oh, be put I on want it in Blu-ray. Blu-ray right away. Uh, number seven, one of your favorites, Ed, A Clockwork Orange. Oh! With uh, Malcolm McDowell and so I don't know who else, but um, pretty graphic The film. Droogs, yeah. yes. We were the Droogs for a Halloween show. Right. Now, I, I, I'm i confused at this, but I know we went to see Sounder in sixth grade at the theater. <laughs> That's a far cry from A Clockwork <laughs> Orange. And I swear, I might have been confused with Now I See One of the Dracula movies, but I swore it was the Clockwork Orange trailer. Maybe they were doing the late night show thing, mm. a midnight showing. I swear I remember that Clockwork Orange trailer before we saw Sounder. And I said I'd rather see Clockwork Orange <laughs> than Sounder we were forced to see. Number six. Dirty Harry. Oh. oh, the first one in the series. Yes. Now we saw that one in Magnum Force at the drive-in later on, and we probably shouldn't have been seeing <laughs> that at the drive-in. Uh, uh, quite that young. Those are very harsh films. Now this is this isn't the uh, Do You Feel Lucky one, is it? Yes. With the how many bullets he's fired thing. All right. Do you feel lucky? Well. Do you pump? I know what you're thinking. Did he fire six shots or only five? You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? <laughs> yeah, that's a great movie. It's got Andrew Robinson as the villain. Oh, yes. The only thing that's uh, not great in that is for some reason in the 70s, they would use that orange blood. I don't know if they were trying to get past the censors, mm. but this has some orange blood in it. Okay. That's the only thing that the tracks from it. Number five, Diamonds Are Forever. Oh. And you wrote December 30th, which means it probably just snuck in for that year. Uh, what does that mean? That It does mean that, but I had no idea. We were made to go to this because it was, uh, it was uh, Christmas break, and I guess there was nothing to do, and somebody said, do you want to see Diamonds Are Forever? And we had no clue what it was, or James Bond at that time, but I went and enjoyed the Diamonds Are Forever. this is the Sean Connery. Yeah, this is the one he came back for after George Lazenby. And I don't know if we knew it at the time, there were gay villains in there. Kid and Wentz, uh, skipping off into the sunset holding hands. Oh, I never saw the was film. The head. 
I think I may have seen maybe two Bond films. One was Moonraker, unfortunately. Huh. You and didn't that, see that in the theater, did no. you? No. And Live and Let Die, I think I saw. Oh, that's good. Um, number four, Summer of 42. Oh. Um, Jennifer... O'Neill? O'Neill. It was, yeah, I remember that. That was... Hermie and uh, this, uh, the one falls in love with the widow. Yes. Um, and this is the funny scene where they go try and get a condom. Oh, do you know what they're used for? <laughs> That's right. The... Oh, you fill them up with water and throw mm -hmm. them off a roof. Right. Have you seen this whole thing? I believe I have, have seen, seen it me? many, many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. The number three film, French Connection. I never saw Seen that whole French Connection? I gotta watch that. Huh? I have seen it. It was a long time ago. I also saw French Connection Two, which was okay, uh, but I do remember. The Roy French Scheider's in French Connection. Yes, and it has the classic car chase scene. Yes, it does. Popeye Doyle. Number two, Billy Jack. Billy Jack. Gonna speed. Okay. <coughs> then I stopped it, <laughs> but it snuck back up on me. My apologies. Oh, no. We're all vaccinated, so we're, nobody's worried. It's just a little tickle in the schnoz. That's mm -hmm. all it was. Got to do a little trimming. <laughs> all right. Billy Jack. Billy Jack. Yeah, I saw that on another one on HBO. Saw Never understood early. the appeal of that. No, it was very uh, liberal movie where, you know, the, the Native Americans were being harassed. And Bernard, I think, was the villain. He would pour shakes over the... The uh, native heads, and then he, Billy would come in without his shoes on and kick everybody. And kick their butts. I only saw the first one, as far as I recall. I think there were three or maybe four. Yeah, there was a few. I think uh, the final one was Billy Jack in Space. <laughs> Just about. There was the trial of Billy Jack, yeah. and then Billy Jack goes to Washington. Something like that. And I think there was another one that was never released. Number one film from 1971. Oh, it's a good one. Is it? I don't know. I never saw it. Fiddler on the Roof. Oh, no. <laughs> With that fine actor, yeah, Topol. Yeah, he was... I saw him in For Your Eyes Only, but I did not see him in uh, Fiddler on the Roof. I believe, and I could, I could be wrong, but um, he made the transition from the theater version uh -huh. on Broadway to the film version. A lot of time, and I, I I believe I'm correct, but a lot of times the actors in the uh, Broadway version or theater version do not reprise, or as Sinatra would say, reprise their roles in the film version. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think the odd couple, they changed somebody. I think Art Carney was the Felix. Oh, okay. But I think Walter Matthau was in the play... Yeah, is there any good songs in the Fiddler on the Roof tradition? Uh, something about the Detective Crumple or something. <laughs> There's that? tradition and tradition. If I was a rich man. If I were a oh, rich right, man. Right. That's a good one. But any other one? I <laughs> To withstand the three-hour running time? I don't think so. I don't know. No. I just like the name Topol. Yeah. Is it Topol or Topol? I don't I know. I think it's Topol. Uh, do you have any honorable uh, mentions? I mention have films? some other films here. Countess Dracula. Ooh, don't know that one. Which was not a good one in the Hammer series. It was about a real life countess that uh, drank, uh, rubbed the blood of her victims on her to stay young or something. Huh. Not one of the better ones. The Abominable Dr. Fives. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good Vincent Price one. Yes, very good. Escape from the Planet of the Apes. Was that good? This was the one where they come back, just Cornelius and Zira to save some money, and Sal Minio, who was killed off early on. Okay, I don't remember that one. It was, you don't remember that what one? What was the one with James Franciscus? I was beneath, beneath the, planet the planet of the apes, and there's battle over the planet of the apes. And the planet of the apes go to space. <laughs> well, uh, they did go to space in this one. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, I remember Claire Isabel going to see this one, at, I think, at the Mohawk Mall uh, Theaters. What number was this in the series? Third. Third one, okay. And we did see Beneath the Planet of the Apes at the theater. That was the one where I'm not sure I saw the 
trailer or not with the boat necks we were talking about oh, okay. last time. You know, you you remember escape from this okay. time. You know, you you remember escape from the planet. I Apes? probably do. I've seen them all. Remember, she's pregnant and they're, they're after the baby. Um, you're not familiar with it, or I, you don't remember? I don't remember. It. I've I know I've seen all of them. Uh huh. Didn't they have a TV series briefly? Yes. Um, but I don't I don't recall. Let yeah, me call this one. They just know the original because it's a classic. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, which I don't think I've seen the whole thing. I haven't either. And Shaft. Oh, it's a porn film, right? No, it's Shaft. Oh, the detective film with Richard Roundtree. Yeah. Wasn't that remade with Samuel Jackson? Yes. Okay. And only, I think in 2019, there was a film, Shaft again. They don't change oh. the titles too often, but they had the three Shafts. They had the original champ, they had Samuel L. Jackson, and they had his son in it. And, wow. And I actually went to the theater to see that, and it was entertaining. Wow. Old I think Shaft. Richard Roundtree actually was in the remake with Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, and he's in this one. Oh, is he? Okay, he was good. In the, he was in Shaft 2000 and Shaft 2019, I think. They got to call it, not to confuse it with Shaft. They never changed. Well, the two sequels, Shaft in Africa... And uh, Shaft's Big Score. They actually came up with another <laughs> name with those. The <laughs> too much Shaft. <laughs> so, so much Shaft I can take. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> you can dig it. I was going to have us sing that one, but there's not a lot of singing in that. <laughs> Half the song is instrumental, and then it goes, Shaft, you're damn right. And we can't sing that part because that's the female. <laughs> <laughs> the Omega Man. Oh, that was Charles Heston, right? <laughs> yeah. This was another variation on The Last Man on Earth. Dracula versus Frankenstein. Do you remember this one? Very low budget and bad. No. With I um, probably saw it, though. Lon Chaney Jr. and J. Carl Nash. Oh, yeah. I've seen right that. It. Yeah, that was cheesy. Best known for the, the poster with the very busty blonde Frankenstein is carrying. Of course, Frankenstein has a little uh, neckerchief here, so you can't yeah, see the them. makeup. <laughs> Play Misty for me. Oh, Clint Eastwood again. Uh huh. Um, who else was in that? Um, oh, her name, Jessica. Jessica Walters. Walters, I think so. Yeah. Uh, that was a very early. Um, what am I thinking of? The Mike Douglas, Michael Douglas mm -hmm. film, Fatal Attraction. And Duel, which Duel. was a TV movie but was released to theaters with McLeod. Oh, Dennis Weaver. Being chased by the truck. truck Spielberg. Yes. yes. Those are some of the other films. All right. Let's, let's rock through these songs. <laughs> I don't Mom, think we're rocking through No, we're not. Songs. We're going to choose some bubble gum. <laughs> what we're going to do. Uh, number 10 of the top 10 songs of 1971. Not three times. By Tony Orlando and Dawn. Um, what is this song about? It's about a guy saying, knock to, to warn me that someone's coming because I'm having an affair. I don't know. What is it about? This is no, He's knocking to try and get the attention of the woman in the apartment above, I think. Oh, okay. On the ceiling, if you want me. Twice on the pipes, if the answer is no. <laughs> he, he couldn't go. <laughs> he just ignore me if he, the answer is yeah, no. Yeah, he couldn't go upstairs and ask any of this. He's banging on things down okay. below. <laughs> Not to be confused with Shaft. Number nine. It's just my imagination by the Temptations. Yeah, that's a smooth soul song mm. from the seventies. Number eight. Take me home, Country Roads by oh. John Diefendorfer. That's his real name. Is it? John Denver. John Fen Denver. He took the name Denver after his favorite, uh, you know, area where he loved to be. Uh huh. Which is why you always get those Rocky Mountain High songs. Was that the area he was in when he crashed his plane? I, I <laughs> he don't was think so. Piloting there. <laughs> Wasn't it come some kind of experimental plane or glider or something? Yeah, I, I don't know if it was an experimental plane. It could have been, but I know that the issue was more along the lines of. I think he had to change switch over gas yes, tanks, yeah, yeah. and he didn't. Really, it was over his shoulder somewhere to uh, switch, and he just couldn't do it. And there you go. Take me home. That's it. We like uh, John Denver. A lot of nice tunes there. I do. Check out the song 
Darcy Farrell. It's a good song. Huh. Number seven, Go Away Little Girl by Donny Osmond. When he was what? Eight when he did this? I mean, come yeah. on. Uh, next song I like, number six. Iffy, but Indian Reservation, mm -hmm. the lament of the Cherokee Reservation <laughs> Indian by Paul Revere and the Raiders. That was kind of a pro uh, Native American song, mm. but apparently, as I was looking this up, they didn't live on reservations. Oh. The Cherokees, I don't know what they called them. Cherokee people. No, 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 no. The Cherokees will return. Will return. It's like a monster was coming back at the end. The Cherokees will yes. return. Number five. How can you mend oh. a broken heart? By the Bee Gees. You like this one because it's you, okay. you don't like the later. I'm not a oh I'm not I a disco was, Bee Gees no. guy. No. This is a good song though. The number four song. One bad apple don't spoil the whole bunch, girl. Oh. The Osmonds. So we had the Osmonds and we had a single Donny Osmond right. song in the top ten. Uh, number three. It's too late. I feel the earth move. Carol King. Oh, that was, um, there was A and B yep, sides, yep. and they were both popular, although the B side was more popular. Number two, Maggie May, Reason to Believe, another B and A side, mm -hmm. by Rod Stewart. And the number one song of 1971, Joy to the World from the Three Dog Night. Joy to the World. Why do I picture a frog with that uh, song? Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Oh, that's right. Jeremiah, doo doo doo. I was a good friend of mine. Doo doo doo. Uh, other songs, some more of these, uh, you know, sappy songs or mm -hmm. bubblegum. Yeah. The, well, this one isn't. The night they drove old Dixie down. Oh, the band. This uh, is Joan Baez. Oh, version. what? Wow, the classic is the band. That's the best version. Oh, that's the best one. Oh, absolutely. The theme from Shaft. Ooh. Isaac Hayes. I was surprised it was number 89, because that's a very popular song. Shaft! Ah! <laughs> hey, that's a good idea. We should uh, flash Gordon Shaft. Gypsies, Tramps, and Thieves. I Ooh, that's Cher. I don't know if that's aged well, right? We can't say any of these things. Gypsies, Tramps, or Thieves. <laughs> Nothing we can mention anymore. And this is interesting. Of course, the Beatles were gone. Mm -hmm. In 71, but we had It Don't Come Easy. Oh, Ringo. Who just celebrated a birthday. 80th, I believe, 81st. I think it's 80, wasn't it? It might be 80. We all celebrated peace and love. Damn, he looks good for 80. He does. <laughs> he does when he said we're all going to celebrate. I mean, he, he's, he dyes his hair dark, uh -huh. but he doesn't have the old face. And the, you know, well, he's got the beard. I think right. that's the secret. Uh, works for him. Uh, Paul and Linda came out with Uncle Albert oh, and Admiral Holden. Jesus, that's, that's awful. That's an odd song. What is that about? We should look that up. I don't know. He does a lot of weird crap. I mean, Ringo did the Don't Come Easy Photograph, another great Ringo song. Yeah, Ringo had some good ones there, and a, a classic George Harrison, My Sweet Lord. Here. Oh, the ripoff song, where he got <laughs> sued. What was for, he ripping uh, off there? Um, He's So Fine by I Think the Chiffons. Oh. Listen to it. They're the same song. Huh? He's So Fine? He's So and Just like My Sweet, sweet Lord. Lord. He goes, my sweet Lord, and their song he's is, so he's so fine. Oh, my. Oh, yeah. Oh. And then they, something, they, it's a, almost a note for note. It's very similar. Oh, jeez. Which made George Harrison write a song called This Song, which is all about how this song I wrote and came to me quite, whatever. Anyway, move on. We only got two minutes. And we have, we're missing the other Beatle, though, did not have a song here. John? John uh, Lennon did I think not he have was one in, uh, I think he had retired for a bit. Uh, came back in 75. I think he stopped recording because he wanted to raise his, his kids. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to rip through these TV shows. Number 10, The Mary Tyler Moore Show. I was not a fan of the show. I oh, didn't no. see enough of it. It was okay, but not one of my favorites. That was part of the Saturday lineup with uh, All in the Family and Mary Tyler Moore and Bob Newhart. You kind of went to the kitchen during Bob Newhart. See, that's the one I watched. You like Bob Newhart. Yeah. Huh. Number 9, Adam 12. Okay. With... Uh, Kent McCord, and the other guy. Uh, I saw that on the reruns, but didn't really watch that one. One out of 12. Yep. Number eight, Funny Face. Don't oh. know that one. That is Sandy Duncan. Yeah. She has red and red
And good times come on the run this fall with Funny Face, starring delightful Sandy Duncan. What are you, crazy? I was trying to get your attention. You'll love the comedy antics of this campus charmer who doubles as a part-time actress. Keep a date with Funny Face, Saturday nights at 8.30, 7.30 Central Time, starting September 18th. How could it be in the top ten and then only last a season? Uh, it was only a season, and they cut it short because Sandy discovered a tumor behind her eye. Oh, no. That's when that... Oh, that's when that... Now, apparently she doesn't have a glass eye. She just can't see out of the eye is what I'm picking up. Oh. Everybody said she had a glass eye, but they took some time off for her to recover, and it came back as the Sandy Duncan show with the same characters, sort of, they added some things, and then that was canceled after one season. You think maybe they didn't want to call it Funny Face because... <laughs> after the eye. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm not trying to be funny, but you think maybe that's why, because her eye, it, does it move? I'm not sure. We yeah. always thought it was clear. Yeah, we knew but something was, was off. On this. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, all right. Number seven. Oh, one of your favorites, Ed. Mannix. Mannix, not at the time, though. Oh, I do remember watching the credits because I like the full song as a nine-year-old or a little older, but not not until I found out there was nothing on at two o'clock <laughs> when I retired did I start it's, watching Mannix again. Well, it's 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 called bedtime, and uh, <laughs> most people should be sleeping by then so they can get up, you know, before noon. Anyway, that was Mike Connors. Yeah, oh yeah, eight, well, eight seasons I think of that I've seen uh, on about three rotations now. <laughs> <laughs> I should go to bed right at 2 o'clock. But suddenly, you know, when you're tired, you're, geez, I stay up late. Hey, nothing, nothing on. Hey, Mannix. That show, and there's some good guest stars pop up. And that wasn't a Quinn Martin production, was it? No, that was oh. Canon, which is uh, right. at 3 if you're up that late. And then when Barnaby Jones comes on, hey, geez, I really should get to bed. It's oh. 4 o'clock now. Yeah, there's a great theme song <laughs> for you. Do, 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 Number 6, Sanford and Son. Yes, I did watch that at the time. Red Fox and uh, what's the other guy's name? Desmond? Wilson? Wilson? No. No, I can't the other guy. I can't Desmond? I don't know. Damon Wilson. Damon Wilson, of course. Yes. We can't forget that. That was on Fridays, I think. I like that I show. Recall. Yeah. Uh, number five, the ABC movie of the week. So whatever it was, people were watching it. These are when they were doing some good movies. We got the Night Stalker out of these. We got that trilogy of terror everybody remembers. And I think Killdozer was in there. Oh, really? Which I never saw at the time, but I saw it was on sale so and just put out on Blu-ray. So I'm going to watch Killdozer. Okay. Uh, last show we did 61. Right. And this show was on that list as well. Number four. Ten years later, Gunsmoke. Still there. Gunsmoke will be on about 15 of the shows we do, I think. <laughs> number three, Marcus Welby, MD. Yeah, I never watched Young. that, but we did a sketch relating to that, I believe. With uh, Was James Brolin on Marcus Welby? Yes, he was on the Amityville, Amityville Horror. Yeah, I, wish, I hope I can find that sketch sometime. <laughs> with the uh, felt beard? Right. Number two, the Flip Wilson show, which I did watch. Did watch that. I didn't like the setting of it where they were in a circle and they were doing their sketches with the audience members right yeah. behind them. I didn't like the Geraldine character so much. I thought he overdid that. Hmm. Um, it was good in small parts, but too much of that. But the show hmm. overall, I, I liked. And the number one show, oh. which you oh. liked, All in the Family. Yeah, that... I think it started in 70, and here already right away, the number one, very controversial. So that's it for 71. We will be back uh, next time with a look back at another year in the past. Get your hiney checked. The New Media Zone has been a Cable 2000 production.